Malaysia. Just for a couple of days. Hello, Pam. Hey. And Pam, you know what? I'm very envious. You know, Ed, you can consider yourself right now a multi-millionaire. <laughs> and you were a thousand ringgit. Yes, right? I was. Well, I can relate to that because I just cleared <laughs> my debit, my credit card debt of 30,000 ringgit as well. And trust me, it was very, very painful. And But now, four years, really hard. And you consider yourself a millionaire. Wow. Yes, it was. It was a tough period of time, right? And through hard work, I managed to pay off plus uh, a tin of you know, million dollars. Yeah. I mean, man, your story sounds like it came around of a fairy tale. I mean, this is what modern princesses dream of. Uh. It's no longer about Prince Charming, uh, Joe. No, you we just want to make our own money. Correct. Right. <laughs> now these young girls grow up thinking, yeah. 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 So when you say that it was tough with the four years, you had to yes, pay off correct. your debts and everything, what was it like? Tell us. Oh, when it started, um, it started when I was 25, when I got my first credit card. You know? And then you just spent like crazy, Yeah, right? you know, I see a bag, I'm like, oh, that's nice. Oh, I don't have money. See, let's put my credit card, right? So it <laughs> accumulated. You. Accumulated at 28, I had, you know, 30,000 ringgit credit card. Adapt. And I look at myself, okay, this is really bad. What should I do now, right? So I then decided that it was time for a change and I joined many seminars because I figured that, you know, with my current knowledge, I couldn't change anything. Plus, I had no money to change anything, right? Wait, what were you working as at the time? I was working as a assistant marketing manager for MNC. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I realized that even if I got promoted every six months, right, no way to pay off my credit card debt. And how <laughs> do you, how should I say, identify kind of seminars you need to mm. go in order to develop yourself right now. I think the first one I went to which literally my, changed my mind was about money management. Mm -hmm. Right, it was a millionaire mindset. And I said, you know, I want to be a millionaire so I need a new mindset. Yeah, that's interesting because a lot of us kind of know that at the back of our minds but we never push ourselves to do that, you know? Exactly. So I think the thing to have to change your mindset so that you can achieve your first million by actually learning how to change it. We need to ask Pam uh, what prompted her to even take action in mm -hmm. the first place because maybe it might help motivate us this is Madonna with Hollywood. Stay with us. We've got Pam Sale all the way from Singapore. She is a multi-millionaire at just the age of 32. Cowboy FM. Madonna with Hollywood. Cowboy FM 88.9. Good morning. Sandra and Joanne here with you. This is the all new Talk of the Town. And we're very excited because we have Pam Sale here with us. She's from Singapore. She's called the Accidental Entrepreneur because she was the Assistant Marketing Manager, right? Mm -hmm. Then four years later now, she's a multi-millionaire. Okay, we'll tell you her story, okay? And which I can really empathize because I feel like I'm also in a situation situation not so long ago, you had a bad credit card debt at the age of 25 to three, uh, three years it accumulated to about 30,000 ringgit. You were living with your parents at that time, right? Yes, so it was lucky for you, uh, you don't <laughs> have to goodness. pay rent, right? Uh? Be because if you were alone, uh, trust me, you'd be like, the no, duh. <laughs> and then we'd look at the chicken also, like, oh, you want to buy chicken but cannot, <laughs> I've got so much debt. And uh, when you were sent... I'm sure you were sent like all those red letters and all that. So did you try to hide it? Yes, uh, I was. Uh, lawyers would send me letters, you know, threatening, threatening me, saying that you need to pay up. So what I do is I ask my dad, could I get the, you know, the 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 key to open the letters so that I could get it to you first? Right. What? So, yeah. so he didn't know you were in credit card debt. He suspected that uh, because I think fishy around the house. Yeah, because yeah. you wait by the <laughs> post, by the letter box, right? So the minute the postman come already, you quickly take the red letter first. <laughs> okay, but I want to ask you, uh, with your friends and you know meeting so many people this is, do you find that this is a common situation with young people? It's very common. I, I would say um, about sixty to seventy percent people are in debt actually. Then what prompted you to take action when a lot of us just let it accumulate? I guess mine was the amount was too much after a while, you know, and it got to me that. It was Getting, uh, uh, affecting me and the cut the credit companies were calling me all the time. They were like my best friends on the phone, right? So, yeah, was, they call you more than your boyfriend. Yeah, they call you more than your boyfriend, right? So it was very stressing to have a phone ring, right? And then look at it. Okay, it's, who is this calling me now? Okay, yeah. so then you you went to a seminar that teach you how to manage money. That was the first seminar you went to. Yeah, it was about um, talk about your relationship with money and how it affects you. And I re I realized I had a negative relationship with money. So when you attended the seminar, you were still in debt, right? Yeah. I was still how in long debt. did it take you to clear your debt? It took me a year plus to, to clear off my debt. Okay. And did the sem seminar help you get, get to where that point? Yes, because uh, when I went to the seminar, I was looking for a solution and the guy talked about passive income and I was fascinated because in school they never teach you about passive income but what's this passive income, right? And I said, if people in America can get it, I'm sure I can get it. So it started my pursuit to earn more money on a very small budget. Okay, so, let's... Wait, uh, sorry, Joe. Let's rewind this a little uh, bit. I'm just trying to understand, right? Uh -huh. Because... When, when we're in credit card debt and we want passive income, or passive income basically means you don't work, money still comes in, right, yeah, on correct. a monthly basis. Yeah. Now, did you go to the seminar with a friend? Did your parents ask you to go? I mean, what prompted you to even sign up in the first place? 
I read the book the the guy wrote, and then when he came to Singapore, I persuaded a friend to follow me to the seminar. It was called the Millionaire Mindset. Did you have to pay for the seminar? Yes. So how? You borrow money? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. But she paid 100, I could afford it at the time. Ah, okay. So she didn't pay off her credit card debt, but she spent a few hundred on a seminar. A lot of people would think that that's oh, so foolish, no money, you still spend Correct. money, right? But that's the thing, you see, our mindset is one of the hardest things to change, mm-hmm. especially if you are prone to certain habits. Now, the only reason why anyone accumulate debt, especially when it comes to shopping and credit card, is because of their spending habit. Now, it must have been quite a switch or was it difficult to change that habit to accumulate this good habit so that you can achieve your million goal it is very very difficult to let it go but it's possible so the key is to be aware of what's holding you back and then from there realizing you want to change and the only way is to attend seminars to to change your mindset and move on Okay, we heard the ask Pamela, how did she get so self-motivated? Uh? Exactly. And then what ex- action did she take along the way to make her into a self-made millionaire just a few years after that? And how she changed her habit. Okay, this is right now, Nobody Perfect, Jesse J, Capital FM. Jesse J, Nobody's Perfect, Capital FM 88.9, but you can come pretty close, especially our guest here, Pam Xiao. She is a self-made multi-millionaire. She's from Singapore. And uh, uh, would you say that your life is quite perfect now? Well, it, it's gotten much better since the days of, you know, stealing letters from the letterbox. Yes, well, she was in debt, almost 30,000 ringgit in credit card, yeah. but she managed to pull herself through, mm-hmm. and now she's a millionaire. Now, we were talking about spending habits, and usually when people get into debts, just mm-hmm. like me, it's all about spending habits. How do you change that or manage that change? I think for me, um, Changing spending habits is difficult. For me, your circumstances helped me change. So the first thing was getting into a 30,000 ringgit debt. Then um, I joined a new company to pay my debt. And when I went to the company, after a week, I realized I didn't like my boss, not my colleagues. Wait, what do you mean you joined a new company to pay off your debt? Because uh, when you change the company, you get more salary. Oh, I see. (laughs) You change jobs. Yeah, I change change jobs. So yeah. you went from assistant assistant marketing manager to I was a I was a marketing executive then I went assistant marketing manager in the MNC ah. and then um, and because of me realizing that hey you know changing jobs is not a good variable then I decide to educate myself and start a business and through the business when you start a business right whatever habits you have surface in your business and because of that I had to minimize my spending urges even when I start my business because you have more to lose because it's yeah. your own company if it was Correct. someone else's company you get a salary anyway. Okay, so how did you, from an assistant marketing manager for MNC, suddenly became a business owner? Like, how many months is that? It doesn't sound like it was a long time, huh? And did you have capital at that time? Okay, that time I was minus 30,000 ringgit. So I was minus, I was was deficit, right, you know, for capital. So what happened was I realized I wanted to earn more money and I decided that the online business was the only way I could earn more money. And I had no idea, no product, no service, right? Even no hobby, right, at the time. Right? <laughs> no hobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're so in debt, you cannot take up hobby. Yeah, it's like if you like writing, you can sell notepads. <laughs> so, yeah. how, so what happened was I then went to Internet Marketing Seminar and I realized that, you know, you could do a concept like business referral. It's like the concept of tuition agency where you connect um, inquiries to the companies and get paid. So I did that. I simply promoted other businesses and I get paid per inquiry. So how did you even get into that? How did you get the network going, okay. knowing which business to promote? Okay, what I did was quite funny because uh, I used to play the violin for about two years. Got hobby oh, what? Yeah. yeah, see violin already? Yeah, but that was, that was before. Before you got into that. <laughs> after you got into that, no time to play violin. <laughs> that, time, that time I didn't have that much hobby. So at um, the time, I remember it was very hard to find a violin teacher online. I went to Google, tried to find one, to couldn't find one, and and I called a friend. So I remember this is interesting. I wonder, you know, how many Singaporeans are looking for violin teachers. Interestingly, online there's a tool that tells you what people are searching for, mm. what service every month. So you know the type of trends plus the quantity. So I decided to launch a violin website, um, saying that okay, if anyone call me, I will then find a teacher. But I had no teacher, at, you know, at the time. You don't know any teacher. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. teacher. How did that happen then? How did the did the teachers finally contact you instead? So the, so what happened was I promoted it and a customer called me. And then I went when he called me. In fact, I put a fake name so that to remind me that if anyone called me, this is violin inquiry. He called me. I said wrong number. Oh my ah. god. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, remember, uh, Pam is 32, now back then she was what, 20, <laughs> yeah, eight, eight. 28? Yeah, yeah and, uh, but, and then I got myself up back, right? I said, oh yeah, yeah, I, I ran a violin agency, right? He gave me the inquiry. <laughs> I went online, fo- searched for a violin teacher for a very long time, found one, and when I called him, he agreed to pay me 50%. So for five minutes, I made 120 sing. Wow. wow! So you basically started your own business because you took the initiative yeah. to just do it anyway, regardless of yeah. how it'll turn out. That's yeah. fantastic. And just to let you know, right, Pam now is a self-made millionaire. She's got a successful internet business going on, and you and I were so inspired, right? Exactly, because we also, from one violin inquiry, want to be millionaire as well. <laughs> this is right now, Eagle Eye Cherry, safe tonight. Capital FM. Good morning, sweeties. Happy Wednesday to you. This is the brand new Talk of the Talk. Now, with me, Joanne and Zandria, we have Pam Sell, the accidental entrepreneur. And I want to say accidental because the, her story is something that mm. all of us can relate to. Number one, she was in credit card debt, which I'm sure a lot of us are. At the age of 25. 30,000 ringgit, that's about 14,000 sing. And she got herself out of it, but let's wait to say she was still in debt when she quit her job. Yes, Pam, you were a system marketing manager and you were in debt and your salary wasn't enough to pay off your debt. And then you went to join this seminar on how to manage money. So you started this online business where you were trying to connect people who were looking for violin teachers. And then you got your first call ever and you made a hundred something sing dollars. And then what happened? Okay, when I got the first call and I see, and I closed the deal, right? I said, hey, I can do your business, right? So then when I worked harder and I closed 10 deals, I earned 1,000 to sing. What? All violin teachers? Uh? All violin inquiries. Wow! How many people play the violin in Singapore? You yes. never know! Yes. <laughs> in four months, I actually earned enough to quit my job. That means uh, it was replaced by working income. Wait, wow. did you manage to pay off your debt as well? No, I didn't. But uh, it was a start. <laughs> so I see if I can do violin, I can do guitar, I can do you know saxophone, I can do drum lessons, you can do... So I simply rinse and repeat the entire business model. Rinse and repeat, I like that I term. like the term. Eh? So okay. we are going to have to rinse and repeat ourselves, right? Correct. We are repeating ourselves every day here, by the way. <laughs> Where's the, the money coming in? Okay, I want to ask you though, mm-hmm. when you quit your job and you're still in deficit with your bank, uh, what did your parents say? Oh, my parents thought I was absolutely crazy. You know, and uh, because my parents, um, they always believe that, you know, you need to work hard, study hard. But that is the old school yeah, mentality. Yeah, that's the old school. You have to go to work, you have to come back, you have to leave me there. But, you know, online business nowadays, you just have to wake up and put on your laptop. So you were living with your parents, so then if they disapprove, then how? Um, I, I kept telling my dad, saying, oh, you know, if it didn't work out, I'll, I'll go back to job. Mm. You know, so he gave me a time frame, but after a while he realized that it was not so bad and he let me continue. Did you enjoy what you were doing then or was just the money that purely motivated you? As the online business? Yeah. Um, it was the, the it was my future that, that motivated me of not being confined and having freedom and having money. Huh, then when you quit your job there was no security whatsoever. Were you scared or doubt yourself at any point? Um, I was scared, but I thought the worst situation, and I see if the worst situation looks fine, I'm good. I'm good for it. You know, I totally agree with that. Cause that's how I work. You work backwards, yeah. Mm-hmm. If this is the worst possible thing that can happen, okay lah, I'll do it. Yes. Because. Imagine all the good things that can come up from it. Because wow. if you're already at your worst, there's yeah. nothing else to <laughs> yeah. go but forward, right? Correct, correct. And you were mentioning that how uh, there is a site on the internet where it tells you what people are looking for. Yes, now, how did you manage to discover that site? Um, I went for internet marketing course, which taught me, and the site is called Google AdWords Keyword Tool. Mm-hmm. Essentially, Google tabulates every set keyword you type into Google, and it's available online free of charge. Mm. So was that, uh, how would I say, useful in you to develop your new business? It was because it showed me trends of how many people were looking for, which helped me, which allowed me to predict how much income I can make from any business before I spend a single cent. So Pam currently owns the biggest chain of online music agencies where she partners with music schools for, for you know, kids or even people just looking to take up music. And this is your main source of passive income? Yes, it is my main source of passive income. Okay, when we talk about passive income, you're talking about not even having to work, you have money coming in, but you have to still connect the people, right? Um, I have a, 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 a lady, she takes care of the operations for me. Okay, so what exactly do you do now? I draw, oh. I draw money and shake leg. Yeah. <laughs> Which we all want to reach. 
We are speaking to Pam Seo. She's from Singapore at the age of 32. She's a multi-millionaire. Not bad from being in debt just a few years ago. Okay, she's telling us a story. And this is the magic of online business and internet marketing. Stay with us. Heart, there's the go. Good morning. Yes, brand new Taco Natalia. Join, come and then we with Pam Seo, the accidental entrepreneur. Now, we all want to be like her because right now, with her passive income, all she got to do is down, shake, leg, get money, right? This is exactly yeah. what Pam <laughs> just said. Okay, so what happened was Pam was in credit card debt from the age of 25, 8, and then she got out of it, and then now she's a self made millionaire. And all she did uh, basically was start an online business, and this was with no experience. No background and no capital, just full of and the desire and the belief that it will work out. Correct. So tell us a bit more about your online business and how you actually venture into the coaching business as well. Okay, so the the online business started with uh, violin lessons because mm-hmm. there was something I learned, and then I rinse and repeat for all the music instruments. And uh, after a while, uh, when the inquiries got stable, I then decided to hire someone who managed the operation. So my main responsibility was making the website run faster. Because you need to pay your uh, the person working with you. Yeah. And how long before you got an uh, assistant? I think it was about a year before I hired an assistant, which when I hired an assistant, then it became passive. Because you need a system, you see. Mm-hmm. It took me a year to stabilize it, to um, have enough revenue to hire uh, a person. Mm-hmm. So when that occurred, I then uh, went for a three months holiday in Spain. Whoa! Okay. What? So the moment you hire a sister, you go for holiday. Hey, Joe, Seriously, yeah. we're in the wrong line. The wrong, right now. We're in the wrong <laughs> line of work, actually, you know, because when we're not there, work just can't be done. Exactly. So it's our assistant. You mentioned keywords that I really like passive income, mm-hmm. and also another one that I totally forgot right now. <laughs> but let's talk about passive income, okay? Yes. Passive income basically is defined as you don't work, you still get money. Yes, correct. Okay? So don't you need to train your assistant or, yes. you know, oh, I remember the other word. Now, system. Yes. Did you realize from the very early on, the very beginning, that you needed a system? Uh, yes, I did. So what happened was um, when I started, um, I had to build my online business like I was going to sell it off. In the terms, there were FAQ templates, there were Excel sheets. Mm. So because the reason is when you, are, you have a system like that, someone can come in and take over very easily. Did you make your own system? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Well, how did you know you needed to start a system? Because a lot of us are so like engulfed in the whole planning and going off that we forget about the system. Yeah, or sometimes let's say for a person that wants to start the system but doesn't know how, how did you do it? So I think the thing is to realize that there are some things that you keep getting stuck in and which is cause inefficiency. So to look at it and see how can I fine tune and simplify the process. So I realized first thing was that um, all the context of teachers were everywhere. So I created an Excel sheet to put all in one Excel sheet and then to have the fields. So to know what were the common challenges and put it in the place where all the information is together to update it regularly and to store it into templates. And where did you learn all this stuff? Um, it was by mistake. It was because if I kept having all this time, when I keep lo- losing time, I said, can, can I make it better? So I then analyze the situation and then fine tune the process. I think the key in any business is to spend some time to review and improve the process. Wow, did you have wow. a mentor at the time or were you just all you, you and you? Um, yeah, it was just me at that wow. time. Did you read a lot of books? Or yes. I read, I read a lot of books. What kind of books did you read? Maybe you can share with us so we can read the same books. <laughs> exactly. uh, Timothy Ferris, um, the 4 hour a week is very inspiring about a guy. Mm. He only works 4 hours a week and uh, his entire business is systemized too. It's a great book. Yeah, my husband has read that one. <laughs> <laughs> so the point to take back is if you have a good, it will also lessen your work hours. And lessening your work hours does not mean it's going to be unproductive. If you have a good system, it will be more productive than spending 40 hours a week. And then translate into passive income. You can go to Spain like Pam did. And then your business still run and you still get money. That's and that right. is why Pam is now a multi-millionaire, self-made. And she's giving a seminar tomorrow here in Kuala Lumpur. We'll tell you a bit more about that. Make sure you stay with us. This is Mariah Carey with I'll Be Loving You Long Time. Capital FM. Capital FM 88.9. Good morning, Sandra and Joe here with you. This is the all new talk of the town together with us we have the very inspiring very mm-hmm. bubbly very real and very rich Pam Seo she's from Singapore she's 32 years old she was in credit card debt uh, four years ago but now she's a self-made millionaire and now all she does is shake leg and collect money and come on to radio shows I really love this <laughs> and I really want to be like that too shake leg and get money now do you think Pam that uh, in modern days any kind of business should have a web presence yeah, I think it's becoming necessary, not optional, because um, 
in today's economy it's getting harder and harder to get clients the online presence will definitely increase your chance of getting in, uh, inquiries it becomes automated plus you move from a one-to-one -one business model to a one-to-many business model you know these days uh, everything is on the internet right yes. everywhere we go we see ads yes, even when you watch a, a YouTube video we see ads popping up and it irritates you sometimes in your mailbox you see spam so you just chuck it away without even looking at it how would you advise businesses to reach their target customers without, without irritating people correct Correct. So uh, one way is uh, firstly to give value, to give value content. Secondly is um, Google has this technique called SEO. I'm going to be mechanical here. It's called search engine optimization, which allows your website to be found for certain keywords. So let's say if you're looking for guitar lessons, then your website appear. That means this customer has pre-qualified themselves. Okay, my husband also knows this. Uh, all this sounds really familiar to me. I should be practicing okay, but you're them. not the one doing it, right? No, yes. You know, because we're too consumed by our daily jobs. It's see? okay, darling. At least you have a partner. So even if he becomes a millionaire, you can still shake it. Right? Right? Yeah, this is a Thai Thai lifestyle. Very good. I want to ask you, uh, you came from a point where you knew nothing about the internet and now you seem to know everything there is to know about internet marketing. Do you think it's possible for any one of us to do the same thing you did? Definitely, I think it's possible. I have many students who came to class and they say they, they could, some of them couldn't switch on laptop, right? Ah, wait, 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 wait. Some <laughs> of them couldn't even switch on, on laptop. Yeah. So how long did they teach her? Yeah. Um. The lady that came, right, was a housewife. She couldn't switch on laptop. Mm -hmm. But after a class, she did launch a website. And in class, you have a competition. She won the competition too. <gasps> Well, oh, when, goodness. when Pam says class, uh, she means she also has a coaching business yes, where you teach aspiring entrepreneurs, so just people wanting to change their lives, is it? Yeah, and also business owners who want to use the internet to grow and their income. Optimize the value of their product, right? Correct. So, like you were mentioning, it's for anyone. So, for like anyone. housewife who don't know how to switch on computers, to business people who has to stand up comedians. So, yeah, that's <laughs> right. I'm asking her this question. Okay, has there been any situation? that you had a difficult student or let's say a student that perhaps didn't manage to get everything mm. that perhaps you were trying to give out. Okay, I think the in general most people understand content. What holds your back is uh, time being consumed by daily life. So when they come to class, they're so motivated, right? But a chunk of them after that, you know, life takes over, they get busy and they never execute it. But some people execute six months later and they still make money. So it depends in time. Why do you think you're so different from these kind of people who get consumed with life? What makes you different? Because I remember when I was in Bali, um, I met an Australian guy. And this guy, he's even better. He travels six months every year for holiday. <gasps> so wow. your motivation is the end result. You yeah. keep seeing the end goal. And, and he told me this word, this line, which I still remember today. He said that, girl, you can achieve anything in life as long as you prioritize. Prioritize. See, Joe, we need to prioritize. Thank you so much, Pam, for taking your time to Thank be here with us today. Now, if you want to meet Pam in person, she has a free coaching session happening in Kuala Lumpur tomorrow. Where? Uh, City Del Hotel. Um, you can check it out at the website Internet Biz Owners Club. Fantastic. So make sure you stay with us here. We've got stuff to give away to you. Paranormal tickets, Lazada goodies, and also romantic food mm. tickets to go and see my new play. This is Vertical Horizon with Your God.